Hi, my name is Lucas Ridley and welcome to this Digital Creator School tutorial. So I teach a Maya for Beginners class and I've had thousands of students take it and I've answered hundreds of questions. And there's a few questions that keep popping up. So I wanna make this video for the total beginner um, who starts out with modeling, which is pretty typical. And the first section of the course is about modeling. So I think that's why I see these uh, problems arise most frequently out of any other problem. So this video is for the total beginner. It's not for someone who's familiar with Maya. And uh, take a look and hopefully you will avoid these pitfalls that I see happen over and over with uh, the beginning students in my class. So I've opened up a new Maya scene and I wanna recreate some of these problems that I find. And I know the process that people are getting there. So I wanna recreate that and show you kind of the mentality of what's happening so you understand where the mistake has been made and how to correct for it. So in the class that I teach, the first thing we do is to model a Ghostbuster trap. So it's kind of a rectangular shape. And one of the fundamental things you do in modeling is you extrude faces out. So I wanna take this face and I kinda of extend it out, not just by moving it, but I wanna leave an edge loop behind here. So how I do that is with the extrusion tool. And it's this little button right here, and I think maybe this is what confuses the students, is that the, the icon looks like you know, a face is already extruded. It extrudes it for you maybe is what the mentality I think is. So when people click it, like I just did, and nothing happens, they think, oh, the tool didn't work, let me click it again. And they end up clicking the poly extrude tool, I've seen upwards of 20 times um, in people's history. And so let me just click it a few times. And uh, sorry, I double clicked it, <laughs> um, opens up the options for it. Um, and then sometimes I'll even see it where people will, you know, select multiple faces and do this as well. And then maybe they start messing with the options here. They're like, okay, well, this isn't working. Let me turn faces together off. Let me hit that. Okay, that didn't work. I'll just hit this a few more times. Sorry, I keep double clicking it. Um, but, you know, again, I've seen upwards of 20 times and how I know that is because all this history is kept in the channel box here in the inputs. So if you scroll down, you can actually see all the poly extrudes we've done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then eventually the student will figure out, oh, I need to pull this thing uh, to get them to extrude. And then they get frustrated because th this is the next level of mistake that you know, they, they're not sure how to diagnose what went wrong. In their mind, they think, okay, I have this tool. It says keep faces together is on, and I finally got it to work. Now why are the faces separate? Well, that's because at some point, like I did, they actually turned keep faces together off. And you can actually go back in the history and see where that happened on pull extrude phase six. When I did that on the sixth time, I tried turning the faces off. So it actually separated this four steps ago for me. And I just was adding, uh, you know, faces on top of that. So the faces were already separated four steps ago. Um, and so when I finally figured it out, they're already separate. And you can see these multiple edge loops here as I extend it out. And you can, you know, start to kind of move edges around. You can see, look, there's more edges here, there's more edges there. It's all this hidden geometry that's stacked on top of itself because we kept extruding, but we never moved anything. And that is the main point here. If you hit a face and you select it and go poly extrude, but you don't move it, that edge loop that is still stacked on top of itself right there. So let me hit it one more time. So if I grab an edge, I don't know if I'm selecting the first, second, or third one that's stacked on top of itself. So if I pull this out, now look what happens. It's all kind of wonky. I don't know why that is. Well, it's because you hit poly extrude and you didn't pull the face out. And that's where that stems from. So uh, let me just show you real quick how to fix that. If that happens in, kind of in this simple way, just delete all that noise. Um, I don't wanna actually grab this lower face. Let me undo this a few times and just get this face back down. So what I can do is pull this up and then start selecting uh, edges and pull those up. Okay, so if it starts to look like this, I know that it's a face stacked on top of itself. So I haven't grabbed the correct face. Uh, I haven't grabbed the correct edge rather. So until, like if you see this kind of flashy black thing, that's because um, faces are stacked right on top of each other. So this is actually the edge that should be above this one. So let me grab that, pull it up. 
So now I know this is the order in which they should be. This one shouldn't be below this one, right? Because we get that kind of feedback where we see it's all wonky. So now that I know that's fixed, um, I can actually just kind of get back to square one by deleting all of this stuff. And you can use two different methods. Um, you can use the append to polygon tool, which I like most, or you can uh, just fill the, the hole if it's something as simple as this. You can go to the uh, mesh tools, which, okay, so what's kind of confusing is it says make holes here, but the actual fill hole is in a different place. Um, it's not super well organized. Yeah, fill holes under mesh. So it'll actually just make another face for. So now we can go back to extruding this and pulling this up. And now, you know, now we have like one face by itself. So if we pull this edge, it should just be that one single edge. So that's how we fix that, all right? So the next step I wanna show that people mess up is um, with edge loops. So kind of another super basic thing, I'm just gonna make a new cube here to, to mess with, is the insert edge loop tool. So let's grab that um, under mesh tools, insert edge loop, and we can just start clicking and making edge loops and you know we're making a bunch whatever and then we're like you know what i don't want one of these so let's go to the edge mode double click to select the edge loop and i'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard which is the key point here and the mistake is made right now when i hit delete on the keyboard but it's hard to see right because it looks fine and if we go into vertex mode we can see all those vertices are left behind. That's a big no-no. If you go into vertex mode and you see a bunch of vertices with no edges through them, that's a major mistake, okay? And we can select those and delete them. But what ends up happening is, let me just leave those there, and how people end up discovering this later, way down the road. So they made that mistake here and then they keep modeling and doing stuff and maybe they try to insert another edge loop. So let's do that. And they click something and they're like, hey, this edge loop tool is broken. And they, and they blame it on the edge loop tool. Um, and they're like, hey, it doesn't go all the way around. This edge loop tool is broken. It was going around earlier. Like if we go down here, look, it goes around because it's not, that edge loop is not going into a face that has more than four sides, which is the point, right? So when you leave these vertices behind, it actually, you can see it even by selecting the edge. You can see the red uh, selection only goes, you know, to where that vertice is. So we go to vertex and we grab it, pull it out. You can actually see those edges. So now we actually created a face that has, you know, more than four sides. So if an ed the edge loop tool doesn't know how to go through those faces, cause that's called an ingon. And the edge loop tool wants and needs uh, four sided faces. That's why it's working down here. Cause there's all of these are four sided faces. I can click this as many times and they'll go all the way around. But as soon as I do it where there's vertices up here uh, or it runs into where there's more than four sides and it's hard to tell again because you know in this mode it's not super visual that that's what's happening. You have to go to vertex mode or try to select edges and think you know, even though that little dot there, that's actually cutting that edge in half. So it's making that be more than four sides even though it looks like it's four sides, right? That I can understand why this can be confusing um, because it's just a straight line and think, oh, it's a straight line. You know, that's not, that, that still looks like four sides to me. Well, it's not. The vertex actually cuts that edge in half. So that makes it more than four sides for this face. All right. And that's why the edge loop tool will not work. Um, so the tricky thing, though, is you can delete vertexes with the delete on your keyboard. But to properly delete an edge um, from anything, you can hit Control and hit Delete on the keyboard. So hold down Control and then hit Delete. Or you can select an edge, hit Shift, and right-click and go to Delete Edge. Those are the two ways to successfully delete edges and not leave behind vertices. All right, And that leaves me to the kind of final point. We, so we've gone through extrusion mistakes. And, and what those lead to, keeping faces together on and off, and how to find that in the history over here on the right in the channel box, you can kind of see where you make mistakes. And then we just learned about edges and edge loops and ingons and how to delete uh, the vertex of that are left behind and how to properly delete edges. So the final one that I wanna mention is kind of a mentality. And 
the mentality is antithetical to learning. And the mentality I'm talking about is the questions that some of the questions I receive, this isn't everyone, but I'll receive a question and the first sentence makes it hard to answer. And what I mean is the first sentence is I did everything right and this doesn't work. So in the very first sentence, they're already not accepting blame. They don't think they did anything wrong. So the learning process is stopped immediately for them in their mind. And this is what is kind of tragic for me to see, you know, when you're learning this stuff, you kind of have to be your own teacher. You know, in my classes, I have hours of courses, but you physically have to be the one to follow along and do it for yourself. And as you progress and evolve in your career and learning all this stuff, you need to learn how to become your own teacher and to problem solve. You know, if you get a job in the industry, that's one of the main points is problem solving. So if you're, how you start is I did nothing wrong and this doesn't work. So you start pointing the finger at other things. It makes it very, very hard for you to troubleshoot and problem solve for, for yourself because there's not always going to be me there to answer questions. There's not always going to be a coworker who's willing to answer a question. So you need to figure out how to troubleshoot for yourself. And the way to do that is to change that mentality. If you have that mentality, the, you know, the first step is think I made a mistake. So then you can go back through the actions that you made and to diagnose what you did wrong. And I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. It's okay to admit (laughs) you make mistakes. I think as someone learning, they get super defensive and think that, um, they have to prove maybe their intelligence or something else. So square one for them is I didn't do anything wrong. I'm smart. Um, I'm not dumb. And it's, there's all this kind of underlying kind of immaturity going on there that you need to get over and mature as a student and an artist and, you know, accept that you can make mistakes. (laughs) So when you ask a question, don't start with, I did everything right. All right. And that's the final mistake I'll leave you with, um, for the total beginner starting out. And if you're in one of my classes and you want to ask a question, don't start the question with, I did everything right. Okay. Um, start it with what the problem is and then we can go from there and diagnose it and figure it out. But hopefully if you've watched this video all the way through, you will not make these mistakes and you won't ask these kinds of questions and you'll have other problems. And I can help you with that in the classes I teach. You can enroll in them at digitalcreatorschool.com. I teach a bunch of different Maya classes and, uh, the one in particular where I think I get the most questions, it's one of the first courses that people take is the modeling class. Cause that's kind of how, kind of how you get into learning 3d. The first thing you need to do is learn how to model something. So you have something to, you know, animate or texture. You have to have some, something has to exist. So it's natural for the first thing to learn is modeling. That's why I think I get the most questions and I see the most mistakes happen in modeling. Um, so if you want to learn this stuff, head over to digitalcreatorschool.com, uh, become a member and you'll have access to every course that I put out. And currently it's over 50 hours and I add to it about every month. So, uh, there's a few new hours, um, of teaching that you'll have every month and you can ask me questions there and I will help you learn this kind of stuff. So if you like this video, like comment, subscribe, let me know that you like this stuff. Um, this is kind of relatively new for me next week. I'm going to try to do something more advanced. Um, so stay tuned for that, but give me feedback. Let me know if you enjoy this stuff or not. Uh, It's kind of relatively new. So if you like it, I'll keep doing it. And uh, I'll hopefully see you in class at digitalcreatorschool.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.